Hi, my name is Ilma and I've been posting Christian blogs for almost 11 years. It's coming next month. So today I'd like to share Psalm 105 verses 36 to 45. Here's the Word of God. He struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their strength. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by day, by night. They asked, and he brought quail, and gave them bread from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing, and he gave them the lands of the nations and they took possessions of the fruit of the people's toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. Psalm 105, 36 to 45. And here's the poem I wrote based on this psalm. Ask the Lord and you shall receive. Remember how the Lord delivered his people in Moses' time? He raised the Red Sea for them to cross it towards the Promised Land. Then he put back the water when they were all safe to kill the Egyptian. He covered them with clouds by day and had fire to give them light in the evening. They were given manna from heaven daily. They didn't starve and it wasn't sufficient. When they asked for meat, the Lord had quail falling down from heaven in plenty. When they were thirsty in the desert, the Lord split a rock and water flowed. Whatever they ask, they were given because the Lord gives in abundance. Therefore, do not fail to run to the gracious throne of God to ask. But make sure that your request doesn't go against his laws. Your Father in heaven is loving and compassionate to his people. Ask in faith and never doubt so you can receive what you ask for. <coughs> Excuse me. Reflection. Why do you think many people expect more than they actually ask? And what do you think is behind the lack of childlike dependence on God that is a key factor in praying? And share some answered prayers that you asked God for and you were given. I think many people have lost their connection with the Lord and because our world teaches us a gimme, gimme, gimme uh, concept of life, meaning they just want to go to God to ask for something and yet they do not have a relationship with the Lord. It's just like, if you, can you imagine um, approaching a stranger and asking something from that stranger, what would you expect to get? Of course, nothing, because you don't have a relationship with that stranger. You have not um, established uh, <clears throat> a loving and caring uh, knowledge of each other. So that's probably one of the reasons why people expect more because of the world's system that um, wants to get instead of give. And the lack of childlike dependence on God, which is a key factor in praying, is lacking in our society today because everybody is wanting control. They don't want to go to the Lord to <clears throat> because, and they don't want to acknowledge that he is the one in control. So pride could also be uh, another reason why uh, people don't have the childlike dependence on God because if you're self-sufficient and independent, what would you need God for? And then <clears throat> I'd like to share some answered prayers. God always answers my prayer sometimes even before it's finished. I already get the answers. Um, one of the most recent 
is when I asked the Lord to show me why my why I keep reacting to someone that I know isn't capable of loving back. And so when I asked that question, it made me probe into my heart. God, God probed my heart and brought me to that point when, because I was traumatized, I would be attracting people who just wants to get and get for me. Nothing is wrong with that if you, this person is serving the Lord because then if he's serving, then, then if that person is serving the Lord, then I <coughs> equip him with what he or she needs, then that will be building up the church. But if that person is trying to get something and steal something from you or sneak something from you that is not to be used for the the, the communion of saints or the the church and for him or his own purpose then we have a problem because when when they do that we shouldn't be expecting any answer uh, from the Lord because they have ulterior motives in James 1 it says that when you ask you should always ask in faith because if your prayer is wavering meaning oh sh could I could I not should I should I not do you, will God give it to me or not because that's not the kind of prayer that God wants to hear the prayer that God wants to hear is that you're expectant of what he is going to give to you because you know him. You know he's generous. You know he's loving. You know he's steadfast in his love. So I encourage you to ask the Lord. You shall receive because a lot of times we're already expecting. We're, we live in a very entitled society where we already expect something when we haven't ask for that that is just bizarre so I encourage you to ask in prayer and ask in truth in other words don't ask for uh, I'm not saying God's not gonna give you material things because he also gave me material things like when my car was eight years old and it was already so rusty and I asked the Lord Lord would you give me a replacement for this car so that I could serve you more? Uh, so I could go and pick up elderly people so I could help them bring them to church. And so from that time that I asked that, it's within two weeks. I had a weird accident, but I wasn't hurt. And God gave me a new car. So ask. Uh, and then James says that too. The person do not receive because he has not asked so the ask the act of asking is the humble part so god wants you to be humble and ask thanks for watching i hope you check my website at ilmaarts.com for artworks photographs and a copy of this blog please subscribe to my channel on youtube so i can make more videos for the lord thanks for watching